When multiplying matrices, we have to do this weird operation, where to get the element in the first column and first row, we take a sort of dot product with the first row of the left matrix and the first column of the right matrix. Then, to get the second column first row, we take the dot product of the first row of the left matrix and the second column of the right matrix. We continue this process until we have all the elements in the new matrix. Pause the video and try to complete this matrix multiplication. It's important to note that we can only multiply two matrices together if the number of columns of the first matrix is the same as the number of rows in the second matrix. For example, we can't multiply these two matrices here, since the first one has two columns, but the second one has three rows. If we have a n by 1 matrix, we call it a column vector. We can graph these like any other vector. These are useful as one of the ways we can represent a state of a quantum computation is through a column vector. It turns out that when we multiply a matrix with a column vector, we get another column vector. Intuitively, what is happening is the column vector is getting transformed by the matrix. So we can use matrices as transformations on a vector. Here are some examples graphically. As you will see in the quantum computing sections, we do this same process of applying matrices to our quantum state to apply operations on quantum computers. We also have a special matrix called an identity matrix. This matrix is all zeros except for the main diagonal that has all ones. If we multiply the identity matrix by any matrix, we get back the original matrix. Verify this is true by multiplying the two-dimensional identity matrix with this matrix and check to make sure you get back the original matrix. Most matrices also have what's called an inverse that when multiplied with the original matrix gives us the identity matrix. We denote this with a negative 1. Graphically, this means that if we have a matrix A and we apply it to a column vector 1, 1, if we then apply the inverse of A, we'll end back on the point 1, 1. Therefore, applying A, then A inverse, is the same as applying the identity matrix, which means the column vector stays in the same spot. 